Hello and welcome back. So, in this video, we will look at uh, gradient boosting. Now, we have seen that uh, binary trees have high variance and we have improved classification accuracy by bagging and adapt boosting. Uh, this adapt boost is what we have looked at. Um, the way adaptive boosting improves classification is by adaptively reweighting incorrectly classified points in every iteration. We will show that uh, we will see, we will try to explain why it actually corresponds to a special case of what we are going to look at which is uh, gradient boosting uh, wherein we consider an exponential loss function. So, uh, in this uh, lecture we will look at this uh, more general technique uh, called gradient boosting. It can be used for any loss function in the sense any differentiable loss function. So, uh, we will consider m data points, training data points each with n features, okay. m data points and n features. Um, we will denote the output of the, um, class, I have said classifier, but we are going to consider only a regression problem. So, we will look at a binary regression tree, which we will say consider a binary regression tree and the output of that regression is tree is y hat corresponding to an input x. I have not indicated the subscripts here for every data point. Um, so, we will look at this table here, we are looking at different iterations wherein we are going to successfully update our model, machine learning model f um, by, by learning from residual. So, in this case we consider the input feature x i, so i runs from 1 through n, the corresponding target variable the ground truth is y subscript i. And we will learn, we will fit this using a binary regression tree and we will call that, we will denote that by f1 of xi. So, for every xi the output is f1 of xi, f1 is our model at this point. So, this is our uh, final model at this point f1 of xi. Then we calculate a residual which is basically the difference between the ground truth and the output of the regression tree, okay, y minus, y, y, y i minus f1 of xi. And we take the, um, the second iteration, we once again consider the input uh, features for the training data, but then we will fit it not to y i, but to rather to the residual. Okay. And the model that we use to fit x i to the residual we will call h 1 of x i. So, then at this iteration the updated model f 2 will be the previous model f 1 plus the model that we use to fit the residual okay. and we call we denote the, that final model as f 2. And then we once again calculate the residual. So, you can see how this goes. In the third iteration, we will once again consider the input features uh, data points x i. We will uh, we'll fit it to f 2, we will call this model h 2, then we will update our model as f 2. So, this is one form of gradient boosting and this actually corresponds to, we will see that this actually corresponds to using a loss function, a least squares loss function. So, I am just going to without any subscripts or anything, I am going to just write it as f of x square, okay. the form of the loss function. So, we will see that, um, that we will see in a few slides that that is the case. Okay. So, just to bring it in line um, uh, with how it is usually treated in literature. We will instead of in the first iteration, we saw that the first iteration we, we I trained, uh, the idea is to train your uh, data uh, using a binary regression tree. Rather in this case, we will initialize the model with by considering the mean of a prediction. So, f 0 of x i for all x, for all x i is nothing but 1 over the number of data points. So, it is just a mean of responses. So, every response is initialized to the mean of the responses in the training data which is a good, um, it is just a guess in this case. And then we proceed as we early as before and we will call that model f 0 of x i, the 0th iteration that is why we start off. So, we start off with the guess okay, and we say that okay, um, we will we'll calculate the residuals based on that guess and then in the first from the first iteration onwards we will fit it to a, a regression tree and then update our model. Okay, once again calculate the residual, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the this is how we will proceed. Now, how do we uh, generalize this? Okay, this is like I mentioned earlier. Again, I haven't done the um, 
the whole, um, entire explanation, but you mentioned here this is a special case where your loss function is actually a least squares loss function. So, then uh, how do we generalize it to any loss function? So, we will look at it now. So, we have input features target, we learn initial model is a mean uh, of all the responses and then what we do is we actually calculate the gradient of the loss function with respect to your initial your, your, your guess from the previous iteration that is the gradient of the loss function with respect to the prediction is what we calculate and that is our target the second iteration and as usual we update remember as you see here you see we have updated using um, this again the learnt model h1 which we have fit to the gradient of the loss function with respect to the um, prediction from the previous iteration and of course, we have this iter hyper parameter nu 1. Uh, this again we have to do one more optimization. So, in this case I will just write it down the one more optimization I am talking about is you have to solve this problem. say uh, you can still use uh, squares, you can use 2 m also. This is done using an algorithm called line search which is a simple algorithm which I would not go through right now. So, you think of this as another optimization you have problem you have to solve in order to estimate this uh, new one. Um, the reason we have to do that rem recall is that we have actually um, fit x i to the gradient of the loss function with respect to the prediction from the um, previous iteration. So, you can think of this as a correction that we do to improve the prediction a bit. Okay. So, then once you have done this then we calculate again the gradient of the loss function with respect to the uh, estimates that we have done and move on to the next iteration. Right. So, uh, here in here it will be x i and then it will be delta l with respect to delta f 1. Right. I am leaving out all the variables, but you can fill them and then we will fit an h 2 and then we will update f 2 as f 1 plus mu 2 h 2 and we will once again estimate mu 2 using a similar process. Okay. We keep doing this till m iterations capital m iterations let us say the m is determined by cross validation it is simply put you have a held out um, data set which you will test after and find out the accuracy at which you will you get the best uh, find out the iteration at which you get the best accuracy that is one way of doing it. Okay. So, in general cross validation is the best method to estimate capital M. Um, so, this is the way. So, why does this work? So, why are we doing this and um, so to just to give you some idea of why it works you all have seen uh, gradient descent right the algorithm for gradient descent. So, let us consider our loss function any loss function this is a ground truth this is the prediction remember we have also said the prediction we can write it as f of some x x is our training data f is the ml model in this case it can be a binary regression tree. Okay. So, if you look at let us say a least squares loss function over right i equal to 1 to m we will have y i minus f of x i okay, squared we have 1 over 2 m. Okay. Okay, let us if we treat and just to uh, just for sake of making it you know easier to write and also easier to comprehend I am just going to write y i minus y hat squared okay. y i hat squared okay. this time to avoid too many uh, subscripts and superscripts. So, let us if you consider this loss function if you consider this as a function of these predictions okay, explicitly. So, l depends on y i hat your prediction and let us say our point then what we do when we are trying to do this regression problems is that we want to bring y i hat as close to y i as possible. Okay. So, you can think of y i hat as unknown parameters to be estimated. So, given this loss function and y i hat is a parameter that we want to estimate. So, if you use gradient descent to estimate y i hat given this loss function how do we do that we would say y i hat we update this the update rule is y i hat minus some learning rate. Okay. So, do not confuse this learning rate with the new one we saw earlier I am just going to use um, just to keep things different just uh, just trying to establish some methodology so, times alpha right 
right. So, there are i equal to 1 to m parameters, right. And if we treat the y i hats, remember y i hats are nothing but the nothing but your f of x i, okay. And let us say if you are doing this as iterative process, then after every iteration y i hat is updated. And how do we update it? By estimating delta l by delta y i hat. And how do we estimate delta l by delta y i hat? We estimate delta l by delta y i hat by fitting it to a machine learning model h of x i, which is what we do, okay. So, why do we do this? We can say well we can just you know since L is differentiable we just calculate that. The problem with doing and then directly just keep updating it does not make sense. The problem with that is remember that we have a finite de training data set. We do not know, we do not have all, all x i, x i is limited, we do not cover the entire space of x i. So, since the training data is limited we only have a very small number of points. So, if, if x let us say each x has 20 features, okay and we only have a 1000 or 10000 data points you think about it right. So, we would not be able, we would not be spanning the entire space. So, in fact, if you can think of it in 3 dimensions also it will be very easy for you to see that there will not be enough there are not enough points. So, we have a finite number of turning points and we are trying to kind of let us say regularize this gradient by fitting it to a machine learning model h of x i. So, once we estimate the gradient then you update the parameter right that is exactly what we did. Instead here by for estimating the gradient we are actually fitting it to a machine learning model h of x i. So, this is where this uh, you can think of it this way and this is where gradient boosting comes from, okay. So, to summarize we we start off with an initial guess and at every iteration we would update your initial guess by fitting h m to the gradient of the loss function with respect to the estimates your uh, predictions from the previous iteration and then also uh, figuring out this hyperparameter to get a better estimate because remember you are fitting to a gradient. So, then you if, if you once you fit to the gradient then you to take that a machine learning model have a multiplicative factor here and try to estimate that factor. So, you, you can think of it also as uh, doing a linear combination of multiple machine learning models in the most of the cases is just a linear combination of multiple uh, regression trees or decision trees okay. Now, it was also observed that see because if you do that in very quickly in a many uh, in, in a maybe in a few iterations you will tend to start to overfit this can happen. So, in order to improve convergence and also not to overfit a learning rate is typically introduced this alpha okay this is between 0 and 1 okay I think 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 or something of that sort is what you have to set in order to get better convergence. So, this is called a shrinkage or learning rate that you typically use. So, you will estimate mu, but you will fix alpha like a figure out alpha like a hyperparameter. okay. So, this is the general process for gradient boosting. So, let us see if we consider let us say um, a non least square model. So, in this case uh, an absolute deviation. So, y minus f of x I am going to leave out the summation and all that just make it little bit clear and this is your loss function. okay. And uh, if you want to take the derivative with respect to f of x, view that as an x size, you will get sine of that. Okay, that's so that's it. So then you fit for the second iteration. You start fixing. Uh, you start fitting um, your um, machine learning models to the sine. So your your feature would be the same. The input features and the data points the target would be either plus or minus. So, plus 1 or minus 1 would be a target okay, that is how you fit to your machine learning model. And then of course, you update your model okay. um, you can also use a learning rate to improve convergence. Then, then um, so if you consider your y minus f of x squared this is your loss function you can calculate delta l by delta of f of x is nothing but so, if you get a negative of that is nothing but y minus f of x. So, if you have a factor of 2 here that that 2 will go away okay. This is nothing but your residual remember that okay. So, uh, we also saw that you know add up boost remember add up boost. So, add up boost uh, corresponds to a is to minus y f this is the loss function for add up boost. So, you can actually derive the update equations for add up boost starting from this loss function okay. So, that is one way of doing it. 
So, you can see that for a variety of loss there is also something called Huber loss which we have not covered but you can look that up once again you can use Huber loss also as a loss function and do it. So, remember that I told you um, we will go through this slide uh, shortly that we are actually um, doing this using binary decision trees right. So, but remember that drawing the decision entry as its own um, uh, binary sorry not binary decision tree, but binary regression tree. Um, so, if you use binary decision trees there could be um, again we will see that the, we can use the same procedure for there also ok. So, do not get uh, just saying ok this only works for regression, but it will work for pretty much uh, even for uh, problems where we are doing classification I will just mention that briefly when we go towards the end. So, let us look at the algorithm and summary. So, we initialize to F naught which is a mean response, mean response of your training data you take that and for every x i that is the output ok that is your initialization. And for subsequent iteration you calculate the gradient of the loss function with respect to the values from the previous iteration your predicted values from the previous iteration. Fit a machine learning model which is a binary regression tree to that gradient, estimate new Okay, by solving a line search problem, update your model. Keep doing that for a fixed number of iterations as they as are indicated by your cross validation study, and that is your gradient boosting algorithm. So, algorithms like XG boost, um, I think, and also now something called light GBM, GBM or nothing but gradient boosting machines. Okay, this one just one terminology, uh, they are just basically implementations of this technique. Now, they are of course, very efficient implementations XG boost light GM are very efficient implementations because they actually fit a binary regression tree effectively and uh, you know, there are a lot of parameters that you can put in to fine tune that ok. It gives you more flexibility for depending on your problem ok, but the, this is a fundamental implementation you, you calculate gradient of your loss function. So, you treat your estimated parameters or your estimated output sorry I never say parameter estimate output or a predicted outputs as parameters in your loss function and you are doing gradient descent, descent to estimate those para, um, uh, those parameters or your predicted output ok. So, that is the uh, idea behind all gradient boost uh, boosting algorithms this is the fundamental idea behind all gradient boosting algorithms ok. So, in summary so it can be used for classification algorithms also we have saw we have seen it now for um, uh, uh, regression, but it can also be used for um, classification. So, when you are doing classification you use a logistic function ok there is a way to do that. The paper I mentioned in the beginning of the lecture actually describes how to do that if you use a logistic function you know, for classification problems uh, or output of softmax functions for multi class classification ok. So, remember that when you are doing this way then the uh, then you will be actually instead of the output is just the probability value rather than the class itself you will be working with the probabilities as real numbers and then you try to move the uh, probabilities closer to the closer to 1 in this let us say that is what we would like to do ok. As I mentioned earlier XG boost like GBM or the implementations of boosting algorithm with many my parameters that help you tune tune it for a particular problem ok and they are tuned for optimum performance ok. Thank you.